Ba-da-bum-bum. Bum. Bum. It is finally in theoretical understanding when you start answering in more fulsome ways those questions that the piano kids have been asking you since about first grade, mm -hmm. um, where you have found ways of saying, that's a really cool thought, um, I promise you we'll get to that later, or it's really neat that you're thinking that way, you know, as a way of sort of diffusing that for a minute so you can keep going down your pathway. Um, because it opens a can of worms that's going to be very theoretical in nature. So Ed would call the labeling of pitches the, with letter names, the labeling of durations with this is a quarter note, this is a half note, this is an eighth note. Um, he would call that theoretical understanding. But again, theoretical understanding, you know, he would also call very sophisticated questions. When you look at the list of questions when you read the theoretical understanding, here's what you could do in theoretical understanding. Trace the history of music from you um, versus <laughs> this is an E. Right? <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a pretty big umbrella. <laughs> So basically, in some ways, I think he's calling theoretical understanding anything about music that isn't under the context of the learning theory framework. Um, and you can do everything you need in music without knowing letter names. Mm -hmm. You can do everything you need in music without knowing to some extent if you have high enough aptitude without knowing solfege even. Certainly without knowing notation. Um, but the solfege and the notation can be tools, notation tools to help you remember, solfege tools to help you problem solve, whereas letter names don't help you problem solve. Yeah. And so the thing about theoretical understanding that is different from music theory is when you're saying theoretical understanding, you are assuming audiation. Mm -hmm. 